Behind me you see a door that leads to a bathroom. Now that entrance is the only way in and the only way out with no windows, similar to the one seen in the High Walter video. The reason I bring this up is because recently there's been a lot of controversy surrounding this video. So today I wanted to share the story behind one of the most disturbing things ever posted on YouTube. YouTube is an extremely big website, like bigger than many can comprehend, with people from all walks of life using it across the world. And with over 1 billion users and more than 300 hours worth of content being uploaded on YouTube every minute, you're going to get some weird stuff. While yes, most of the content is just boring footage of little kids dance recitals or home videos of family picnics, every once in a while a strange, creepy, or just flat out disturbing video will be published. While we all know about the ones that go viral, deep within those thousands of hours of content being published every day is something much more sinister that no one has even found yet. Sure, there are a lot of people browsing this site, but most of the traffic is being sent to big channels, not random videos. This leaves something like, Hi Walter, I got a new girlfriend today, undiscovered for many, many years. The video starts with a man named Patrick who appears to be in his 20s talking to the camera, and in an almost crazed manner starts to talk to a man named Walter, but things only become much more creepy from here. I was at the mall today and guess what happened? I met the most wonderful girl! We went shopping at JCPenney's and she tried on a lot of clothes. And she ended up buying a whole lot of them, you know what I mean? And then we decided to go and take a look at some of the jewelry at K Jewelers and she picked out this most awesome necklace, that I've, the most amazing necklace I've ever seen! and. I, I know she wanted me to buy it for her because she kept on looking at me and and then we got kind of tired of the mall and I brought her back to my place and I know I know she hates cameras Walter but I'm gonna show you her anyways you ready For seven years, this video received almost no attention from users online. Firstly, most would have no way of finding something like this, and the few that did probably just assumed it was a fake comedy skit with a really twisted reveal at the end. This couldn't possibly be legitimate. Could it? When the video started gaining traction a month or so back, people were quick to dismiss it as being fake, but the evidence they presented to support this claim was lacking to say the least. Others would start claiming that the woman in the video was a YouTuber named Sarah Bull since she was one of the first people to leave a comment on the video, but she was quick to respond saying that this was false. I've had a lot of new visitors come to my page lately and kind of bombard me and harass me actually, asking if I'm the actor or the girl um, in this Walter video. And no, I'm not. I don't know how more clear I have to get, but I am not the girl in this video. This volunteer investigation would take yet another huge turn though when people discovered a possible connection between this video and a missing Wisconsin girl, as they searched around the internet for any possible insight. Kayla Berg was a 15-year-old high school gymnast living in the town of Antigo. All seemed to be going well for her until August 11th of 2009, when she requested her friend to drop her off in front of a condemned house 40 minutes away from her hometown at 9 o'clock at night. This was the last time she was ever seen. Why did people start bringing this up? Well, she went missing exactly two months before the High Walter video was published online, and the girl in the video does seem to share a resemblance to Kayla. Not only did they look the same though, but the last thing she was seen wearing was a red strap top and blue jeans, exactly what was being worn by the girl in the video. On top of all this, the two stores mentioned in the video were JCPenney and K Jewelers, both of which had shops in the mall close to where she disappeared. With that, people started wondering if this could actually be her and contacted the FBI and the missing girl's friends and family. In an interview with a local news station, Kayla's mother even says that many of her friends and her brother thought it looked and sounded just like her. What was first thought to be just another joke video in a sea of online content was becoming more real. Was this video really showing off his victim for the world to see? Why would Patrick do this? Well, it actually wouldn't be the first time an abductor revealed his victim out in the open. 
Another older yet still relevant example of a kidnapper showing off his prisoners in plain sight happened 36 years ago. While it may sound absurd, that is exactly what Ming Sen Shayu did in 1980. Ming was a very intelligent but also deeply disturbed individual that first immigrated to the United States from Taiwan when he was 8 years old. From accounts of former classmates, he was very gifted in high school, both in the classroom and in sports. Not only was he on the wrestling team, but also played varsity football. On top of all this, he was voted most likely to succeed by his peers, and did end up having some success running an electronics store. One problem he had though was that he struggled to get a girlfriend, and this frustration led to him obsessing over his old algebra teacher Mary Stoffer. He began stalking her and finding out as much information as possible, which in result led to his plans of kidnapping. On May 16, 1980, Ming approached Mary and her 8-year-old daughter Elizabeth at a beauty salon. At gunpoint, he tied them up and put them in the trunk of her car. At one point on the ride back to his house, Ming pulled the vehicle over because they were making noise in the back. When they were stopped, a 6-year-old boy saw them, leading to the child being thrown in the car as well. Since this boy was not part of the plan, Ming pulled the car over and beat the child to death with a metal rod and dumped the body. Once he finally made it back to his home, the two women were locked up in his house, which is where they would stay. On day 23 of being held captive, the delusional Ming, wanting to play out his family fantasy, decided to bring his prisoners out in plain sight, as they went on a road trip to Chicago. Little did anyone driving by know that these women in the Winnebago were actually being searched for. Finally, after almost two months, Mary was able to break out of her enclosure when Ming was at work. She then called the police and waited in the front yard for them to show up. Later that day, Mary and her daughter were able to reunite with their family and Ming was arrested. The main reason I bring this up is that you never know for sure what a person willing to kidnap somebody is capable of. Perhaps even bringing their victim out in public, or yes, even posting a video online. Things were starting to get very real. While it started off as a small group online researching an obscure video, the FBI was now involved. Federal agents and local authorities were starting to pour a large amount of resources into getting to the bottom of this. The public was also being made aware with big YouTubers such as Philip DeFranco picking up the story. Okay, so with all of that said, this video has popped up here and there over the past two years. But in the past day, it spread like wildfire. With all this support, there was no doubt people were going to get to the bottom of this. The original video was even deleted by YouTube since they thought it might be real. Could it really be possible that there was a video available for anyone to see showing a missing person tied up in a bathroom for this long? Well, the first crack in the theory was found when a man playing Patrick was discovered on a video from the 2150 Studios channel. She's being so strange. Jeb. Huh, what? I got something for you. What? <laughs> By the way, that is not yours. <laughs> The final nail in the coffin was when the local police department published a statement after their investigation reading, The Antigo Police Department was able to verify that the YouTube.com video, Hi Walter, It's Me Patrick, was a fake video and does not relate to an actual abduction or any illegal activity. The Antigo Police Department was able to make contact with the producer of the short clip and the two actors in the video. They did not intend to depict any reference to our missing Kayla Berg. We will continue to investigate all tips and leads that we receive regarding our missing Kayla Berg, and will do whatever possible to find clues to Kayla's disappearance. Our thoughts and prayers remain with the family and friends of Kayla as they had to endure many different emotions over the last few days as we investigated the source of the video. We appreciate all the cooperation we received from the media and outside sources that assisted us in determining the video origin. So there you have it, within a few months, High Walter went from an old video no one had ever really noticed to one of the biggest things online. It's strange how the internet works that way sometimes. Even though this video turned out to be fake, Kayla Berg is still missing with the family looking for her. And there are a lot of bad people out there who are just not posting their crimes on YouTube. So all that I could ask is that you try to stay safe. Ignore that.